Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, councillors, members of the public. Um, I can start at, uh, this evening's Development Management Committee meeting um, with item one, which is apologies for absence and substitutions. Thank you. Um, any declarations of interest? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, it's only uh, it's only personal interest, but I'm now chairman of the Harlow Area Actors Group, uh, who have had meetings with uh, representatives from uh, PHE in the past. Okay. Thank you. And I'm the chair. Uh, I'm not a chair. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Elevating my status. I'm a ward councillor for Hare Street and Little Pandan, and which is On situated in it. Yeah, not to your interest. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, so moving to item three, which is the minutes which appear on pages three and four of your agenda papers. Are they agree? Three. And a separately circulated set of minutes, which are the minutes from the other night. Last week. They agree? Yeah. <coughs> They're on the iPad. Excuse me. Yes. They agree? Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. <coughs> Any matters arising? Thank you very much. Um, item five, written questions, there are none. Um, item six, procedure for consideration of planning applications. Um, so we'll start, each item will start with the planning officer presenting their report. Comments have then been invited from members of the public registered with government support section, at least 24 hours in advance. There are three maximum speakers against an application, three, four, and each speaker is limited to three minutes. Comments were then also invited from applicant or agent, who again has three minutes to speak, and again would have had to register 24 hours in advance. Following that, councillors will ask questions and ask and seek clarifications from planning officers. Um, officers will respond uh, to any technical questions which are raised. Councillors will then debate and vote at the end. Okay, so if I could ask Mark to make a presentation, please. The application seeks outline planning permission for up to 115,200 square metres of floor space principally for research and development purposes with office, administration and other ancillary facilities, new accesses, landscaping, parking and other ancillary works. All matters are reserved, meaning that a decision is sought on only the general principles of the scheme. The reserved matters, meaning details of the access, layout, appearance, scale and landscaping, will be subject to a separate application if outline planning permission is granted. The proposed drawings indicated in this presentation are therefore illustrative only. The site was formerly occupied by Glaxo Smith Klein or GSK, mainly for research and development purposes. It is located within the Pinnacles employment area and consists of three distinct parts. These are the north site, which if you look at my cursor is there, the middle site which is below it, there, and the east site which is there. The three parts are separated by Cold Harbour Road with 4th Avenue to the north, Elizabeth Way to the west and 3rd Avenue to the south. The north side was the main operational part, with the east side and middle side primarily for parking. The surrounding area is mainly occupied by businesses and industrial units, and parts of the middle side are designated as wildlife sites and green wedge. This slide shows the uses of the buildings when the site was in use by GSK. Um, as you can see there, the majority of the buildings were collaboratory or office uses. The proposal seeks permission to facilitate the creation of a science hub for Public Health England, or PHE. The science hub would be the National Centre for PHE's research, training and administrative functions. 
The maximum amount of floor space would include up to around 69,000 square metres of retained floor space, depending on the amount of buildings to be demolished. Um, and the application would seek a phased approach to the development with approximately 31,000 square metres of new floor space provided by 2024 and up to 23,000 square metres in a potential future expansion. So this slide shows an illustrative master plan of the proposed development up until 2024. And this one shows the potential future expansion. If you look at the screen, the key difference is the buildings on the eastern and southern part of the site. So there's that one there, the one below it, and this one here. This slide shows the potential uses of the master plan for the potential future expansion. Uh, and the Rivals building will be located to the southwest of the north side, which is this one here, the red one. Uh, with the majority of the other buildings proposed for office and laboratory uses. And the multi-storey car parks will be located on the middle site, which you can see uh, labeled as MSCP there. Uh, this slide shows how the main new laboratory building could be designed. And this one shows how the arrivals building and how the uh, office and training functions could be built out. Whilst the application is mostly indicative, the applicant has submitted a design code which confirms how the site would be developed. It goes into a high level of detail regarding different aspects of the scheme. For example, uh, these slides show the maximum heights of the new buildings uh, and they would not exceed the heights of the existing buildings. So you can see at the top, um, the proposal would have, wouldn't be able to have any flues which are higher than 105 metres, which is the existing flue there, you can see. Um, and the same scenario for the top of the buildings, um, and then the, the bulk of the buildings at the bottom. Uh, and so this is the heights as shown on the master plan, so you can see that they're coming in well below the, the maximum extent of the of the existing buildings there. Uh, in, in terms of other things in the design codes, uh, it's very sort of um, <coughs> robust. So this one is showing the massing, um, how different buildings would be, uh, how the massing would occur. And this gives good steer as to um, how the building should be designed and then obvious um, things that should be avoided there at the bottom. Uh, it's considered that the scheme would have a high quality design and layout um, as a result of the design code and subject to the reserve matters and discharge of condition processes. Um, and it's also considered that the visual effects of the proposal will be appropriate. The design code also controls landscaping matters and this excerpt here confirms that a significant amount of landscaping, um, all protected trees and the green wet wedge would be retained. Detailed landscape strategies have been prepared for the initial and the proposed future expansion scenarios, despite landscaping being reserved for future consideration. You can see the, some of the different landscape scenarios here. Uh, the illustrative scheme suggests that 402 trees would need to be removed, but over 834 would be planted. Uh, and on the whole, it's considered that the proposal will be acceptable in terms of landscaping. As shown on this plan, there would be a series of improvements to Cold Harbour Road to facilitate access between the car parks and the north site, including a signalised crossing between the visitor's car park and the arrivals building. Uh, which you can see where the, the, uh, the blue arrow is. And there would also be raised and narrow pedestrian crossing points, which are where the, uh, you can see uh, in orange there. A cycleway would also be created to the eastern side of Elizabeth Way, and conditions are recommended to ensure sufficient parking could be provided. Neither Highways England nor the Highway Authority
Authority have concerns regarding traffic impacts, access parking or highway safety. These slides show examples of how the site could be built out. So this first slide would, view, would be the view from the arrivals building from the junction of Elizabeth Way and Cold Harbour Road. And this second one shows the proposed view from the roundabout to the southwest of the middle site. You can see there that you may see glimpses of the car park, which is behind this green wedge here. And this final one shows the view from 4th Avenue to the east. Subject to the reserved matters and the comprehensive set of conditions, there are not considered to be any significant impacts arising from the proposal. The applicant has confirmed that they'll, uh, they will enter into a 106, Section 106 legal agreement to secure all of the required obligations identified within the report, including a contribution towards early years and childcare places, a scheme for promoting employment, training and education opportunities, a scheme for provision of public art, and money towards monitoring of a uh, travel <coughs> to management plan. The proposal seeks to reuse uh, the site for established research and development purposes and is strongly supported by both national and local planning policies. The Science Hub would bring about a significant number of direct economic benefits, such as the generation of up to 3,245 jobs and indirect benefits such as education and training opportunities. As stated within the report, the presence of PHE in the district would solidify Harlow as a key location within the London Stansted Cambridge corridor and would encourage further investment into the area. The benefits of the scheme are considered to be substantial. Accordingly, the officer's recommendation is one of approval subject to the applicant entering into an appropriately worded section 106 agreement and the conditions are set out at pages 34 to 40 of the agenda. Thanks. Uh, could I ask John Curry to come forward, please? <coughs> John, if you could take a seat, turn the microphone on, and we'll have three minutes. First of all, apologies for the phone. I'd forgotten it was less switched off. Um, Harlow Civic Society don't often get a chance to welcome an, an application, but on this occasion, <laughs> I'm here specifically to welcome this fantastic <laughs> initiative. When you look at that picture up there, you think, well, that's going to be a great site, and it's going to be great for Harlow. Um, I've been asked to come along and just say, say those few words. Uh, it should bring a lasting benefit to our town, good employment prospects for all, and a timely kick to all of us to ensure that the town is worthy of Public Health England's presence in the town. We do need, there is work to be done and uh, this will perhaps give everybody a bit of a, a, jolt, a jolt. We've, we've not had the resources to examine all the application of 220 odd documents, but having skimmed through and looked at, at the key items, it's obvious that design has taken a very high high place in the, in, the, in the scheme of things here and that's, that's good. We like the idea of good design and that's partly why we exist. And uh, what, what we, So what we've seen has encouraged us and, and we believe that this campus will be an enviable place for people to work. We have a number, we've had a number of meetings with representatives of Public Health England and we've made our, our views about Harlow known to them. We are therefore in a position to say that this application is most welcome and we hope that the committee agrees with our view. Thank you, John. Thank you. Could I ask Tim Harry to come forward, please? <coughs> Turn the microphone back on, please. And we'll have three minutes as well. Thank you very much indeed. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the programme director um, for the programme to deliver the uh, science of. So I've been involved with this programme for quite a while, my heart and soul is in it. Um, first of all, uh, thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to talk about our application. Um, we truly believe this will deliver world-leading facilities, world-leading science hub campus. Um, <clears throat> so um, I think since the announcement of our, our plans, um, what we have done is undertake an extensive uh, programme of community engagement. We saw this as really important. 
So, for instance, we've held two public uh, exhibitions, issued four community newsletters to update local residents at key milestones. Um, and a number of us have attended numerous community events, uh, such as Heart for Harlow, Linkfest, and Black History Month. We've set up stands at the library and the Civic Centre, and only a few weeks ago we had another stand amongst the Christmas shoppers at the Harvey Centre. Alongside that, we've held a wide range of one-to-one -one meetings with schools, colleges, universities, businesses, organisations, charities and residence groups. And I think our, 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 our main aim throughout this has been to be open and transparent as possible about our proposals. And I think we've done this in a, with a determination to be a good neighbour, a member of the community, uh, who wants to play an important <coughs> role in the future of your town. Uh, just as importantly, um, we have spoken a lot, but we've also listened a lot. Um, and as you might imagine, we've gathered a, a huge amount of feedback and comments uh, from these activities. And we've pulled through these, and where possible, have taken these into consideration. And many of the comments have hence played a significant part in shaping the application before you today. These are plans we're extremely proud of, because they would ensure we can continue to deliver and improve our world-leading public health science, research and innovation. Uh, which is, is recognised not just across the UK but also globally. And this will allow us to tackle the ever increasing public health challenges that the UK population certainly faces today and certainly will continue to face in the future. And finally, although today is a significant milestone for PHE, we understand that this is just the start of the process. And we're looking forward to continuing to work with your good selves, the local community to ensure that the campus develops in a way that you too can be proud of, <coughs> not least because of the positive contribution we will make to the future of Harlow. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Members, um, questions, clarifications? Who wants to start? Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Lakata. I'm about to kick off. Um, this is a, a huge application. Uh, with an incredible amount of detail in it. Um, <coughs> I have to remember it, 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 it's only an outline, um, but we need to uh, ensure that there are sort of certain standards established from the outset. Uh, now, you know, a number of us have questions about uh, the, the impact on the roadway, uh, and so public transport and parking and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I had a particular question about um, how. Uh, HEVs and so forth are going to be entering and exiting and which route they'll be taking. Um, it's probably a bit too early to be, to, to be definitive or, or actually uh, sort of like laying down the law, uh, but if you can explain how that is evolving at the moment, I think it might be helpful. Thank you. Um, so within the submission uh, in the environmental statement that considers um, measures to sort of minimise the impacts of HGVs both during construction and operation. Um, so within that, it says that uh, routing for construction vehicles would be um, agreed prior to construction, um, but really it's about trying to direct them onto uh, the existing A road network, so um, along 4th Avenue and Elizabeth Way. Um, access is a reserve matter, so obviously there's an opportunity for um, further details to come in on that, but certainly it seems that the intention within the submission is that they'll be using the, the appropriate sort of strategic routes. <coughs> Thank you, that's, uh, that's helpful. Um, one, of the other, uh, one of the other issues that has been referred to already is the uh, uh, HP design guide, uh, which again provides uh, reassurance, I think, uh, to uh, uh, members as to what can be done and what can't be done in, in, in terms of uh, the heights of buildings and where they can go uh, and what they can clear. Like, or, again, uh, that's going to be subject to, to, to further application uh, 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 further down the line. But uh, so just out, a, a 
at least at this stage, you know, the, the guidelines are being established, assuming we, uh, that we go ahead with it, uh, <coughs> which uh, I think sort of, you know, removes a lot of questions that, uh, that we may have. I say you know, it is a huge application. Um, we were told earlier um, there are 25 other studies. Oh, sorry, is this a question or are you moving to debate? No, 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 it's trying to explain where the questions are coming from. Uh, in fact, you know, there is so much information there. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thanks, Clark. Yes, uh, this is really just for reassurance. Sorry. Reassurance. Um, I asked a, a question a long time ago about Portland Down and whether Portland Down was coming, which was highly controversial with chemical <coughs> issues and defence and so on. And I was told that it definitely isn't coming to Harlow. Now, I know that some people think that it is coming to Harlow. I just like the reassurance that it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> no. If you'd like to say it a bit more loudly and definitely. <laughs> no, no, it, no, it isn't. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you. Um, could, I, could I just ask a simple little question? I, I noticed something about um, micro gardens, which I thought was rather an attractive idea. Uh, I believe the intention is for the staff to um, to use them. Um, again, landscaping is a reserve matter, so we'll get more detail on that yes. when we get to that stage. But yes. certainly, it seems like there's a, a very sort of well thought through strategy for using various bits of the site and making sure that everything's landscaped and has has its own sort of character. Mm. Okay. Thanks for Thank you, Chairman. Um, as Councillor Carter said, uh, the officer said this is outlined, so it's difficult not to ask questions which are on reserve matters. So mm. I'm trying to avoid those questions um, and uh, give you a fairly easy ride tonight. And when the reserve matters come up, make it more difficult for you. Um, but with the, the trees, I think, is one that um, I thought Jean might be asking that. Um, there was a slide up there which, which was from Fourth Avenue, almost that one. That's <coughs> No, go back a bit. That well, that's, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Are those trees remaining? Yes. Okay, so you've got that. So, so the, the, the sort of the, the large ones, which are uh, contain, mm. containing or keeping the, the buildings under cover, are retained. Yep. Yes, they are. You can see from that one there yep. that there's a significant amount being retained. They're not. The, um, the proposal doesn't seem to do anything in the green wedge. No. Any, any buildings. Well, I'll, I'll <coughs> pass it to somebody else at the moment. What else I need? Turn the microphone off. Please. Oh, sorry. Okay. <coughs> it's, um, under item number 12, it's on page 36, but the bit I want to talk about goes on to page 37. It's the, the relocation of the existing West Band bus stop, that one, and then right at the bottom, the upgrading of the two bus stops and Elizabeth Way and the bus, four bus stops and Fourth Avenue. Now that's got to be done according to this prior to commencement of the development and sort of. Which is, I'm a big fan of public transport in the house. The problem is there are no buses that run on there. There are no buses there. They've actually just taken a bus stop there where we just see the picture of my cars for. Behind where we stood there was a bus stop there that they just had it there. I go past it or four times a week and they just moved that and there are no buses along there. So had we got in place a plan in some way to because we're gonna have a lot of people obviously working there, of forcing the or oh, forcing not quite the right word, but uh, pushing, persuading the bus putting their arm the back bus company so if they start running regular buses over there. Mm. There are no buses, so we've spent an awful lot of money on bus stops <coughs> that are not going to be used. Um, the <coughs> this, this has all been put together through um, pre-app with the county council and with the local planning authority and um, <coughs> highways are uh, 
encouraging those works to be done. Um, I suppose there's, there's two elements to it. There's creating an environment where it's more likely that those services would be put on, which obviously this scheme goes ahead and etc. and it's probably more likely that that would happen. Um, there's also going to be um, uh, a bus put on through the um, travel and visitor management plan. So um, I must admit I don't know specifically, but presumably there would be um, the, the buses from that would probably stop there as well. It makes sense to you. There is a limited service from the station. So I mean, just clearly, bus provision is down to Essex County Council, isn't it? Mm. So I am sure. Um, Public Health England and ourselves will be working with County Council to make sure there are buses to service the bus stops. Um, but you're right, there aren't any there at the moment. Any more questions? No? Debate then. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've been on the planning committee for quite a few years now, and this is the first planning application I can recall that's a big one and yet so many people want it to come into harbour because the things that we're going to get out of public health coming here are phenomenal. Um, for the town to get the headquarters of public health England is um, a privilege at the, at the very least because they've been with them so much. Um, the employment side, from the young people to the various ages, that are going to be getting jobs there. The opportunities are vast. And for the generations that are coming up behind us, they're going to have major opportunities between Public Health England and the Enterprise Zone. It's a whole new world that we, we've got coming in. And um, the, the jobs that are there are, are very skillful in, in a lot of respects, but they're also administration, security, everything across the board will be in that site. And the community links, we've just heard that um, public health have done a lot with the um, different organisations around the town. The community links to them are so important and that is such a good generational aspect for the future because they're going to be in the town a long, long time. We've got a big future through them and with them. And I'm extremely excited that they are coming here and we've got a very strong ethos now for the town going forward. It won't just be Harlow country, it'll be worldwide. And you can't get much better than that. So I'm very excited, recommendation total. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for Thank you, Jim. Probably gonna, we're all going to repeat ourselves for this, I think, yeah. tonight. <laughs> um, but it is, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for a Harlow, I think, as much as it is for PHE, we need to step up to the plate to, to make sure that they're welcomed and looked after, providing they, they, they have their, keep their side of the, the, the bargain as well. But you know, it's a fantastic opportunity. You know, the, 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 the number of employees that will be there eventually, and I think we all need to pull together to make sure they get what they want and we get what we want. And I think, well, we're, We've gone a long way to get what we want. <coughs> We've got to make sure that things like buses and public transport is, is, is put on properly for them. So um, I've, I've got a couple of, con you know, I just mentioned the, uh, the, the lorry movements, perhaps during construction. Um, you may need to, to look at that to make sure they're not going to be diverted through the town centre. Or they don't use their sat navs and end up in the town centre, which is quite easy. It happens. <laughs> Um, or down Royden Road, I suppose, is the other one. It might get stuck down there. Um, the other thing I, and I know, maybe will have another go at me. <laughs> I'm pleased to see some, some within the paperwork, the, the glass artwork at reception is going to be retained. And I hope it does you stick to that. Because I, I thought it was fantastic when I thought it might not be retained. I thought, what a waste of a piece of artwork. It, it's a fantastic piece, piece there. And... I'm not generally a, 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 a modern architecture. I don't think I like more traditional. But I think this building as it stands at the moment is fantastic. And I think your additions to it is gonna, gonna complement what's already there. So, yeah, I'm fully endorsed this as uh, the outline application. Thank you very much. Thanks, Clark. 
Yes, well, as, as has been mentioned, <coughs> I'm going to just repeat what other people say, but on the other hand, um, you do want to hear what we've got, <laughs> what we think, and I think this is a, an extremely attractive proposition and a, will be a real asset to the town, um, especially as it's got a global reach, and I think it's so important particularly from the jobs point of view, over 3,000 jobs, mostly daytime jobs, which is interesting, and uh, promises economic growth of the knowledge industries, which um, is excellent in working with the college and um, opening up education and skills, and hopefully our young people will be encouraged all the time to um, work and eat and I, I gather that this is one of the aims to really encourage <coughs> people to receive the education and training opportunities so that they can fully participate. And that's excellent. Very significant uh, research and development. It's on a brownfield site and no change of use here. At first I was absolutely shocked when I looked at the landscaping and saw the figure loss of 400 trees. My, I nearly in, instantly abandoned it entirely in my thinking and then realised that it, uh, it's going to be replaced by double, over double the number and, and the important ones are going to be retained, which is good. Um, I think it's important that we don't overlook the condition uh, for a detailed landscaping. Sometimes they sort of slide away a bit, but I, I think that is very important to maintain that condition, keep it highlighted. I like the local improvements, obviously, because of uh, the ward interest as well. <laughs> I'm very pleased that um, there's an upgrading of the footpath and the cycleway along Elizabeth Way. That's good and uh, improvements to the bus stops. I, I mean, I think that there are a, a limit, there's a limited bus service that has to be worked out, but I'm assuming that they're going to be working with the bus companies to develop that. It would be good if those imp local improvements were developed earlier rather than left right to the very, very end of the entire <laughs> Entire process, but um, that would encourage the goodwill for the workers on site and also local community. Um, and then we've got the early years and childcare, um, all and local art, all benefiting from this application, section 106. So I welcome this wholeheartedly. I think it will be an excellent addition. Our time. Councillor Clark, Councillor Carter. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Jeff. Um, to start off with a uh, quick point about the buses, which people seem to be getting um, fixated on. Um, uh, Essex Highway su uh, does subsidise some services, but it doesn't actually uh, approve or uh, introduce services. That's all down to individual operators. Uh, so we don't have the HE to talk to the local operators to encourage them to, uh, to, to run services. But anyway, <coughs> um, moving on, I, you know, my colleagues have sort of gone through uh, all of the, the reasons that we that we welcome the AG to Harlow and the impact it's going to have, uh, and you know, <coughs> uh, I you know, totally agree, totally, totally support uh, what they said. Um, and it's probably an appropriate time now at this stage as we move. I assume that we will be a, a, a approved application uh, to start the ball rolling. Uh, pay tribute to the hard work over the last few years of uh, with Michael Morley and Robert Halford uh, in lobbying and networking and uh, arguing furiously uh, to try and persuade both the AG and the government to, uh, uh, to move it here. <coughs> it will have a huge impact on the town, both now and uh, a long time in the future. So it has to be uh, welcome from that point of view. It's very impressive the, the amount of work that uh, the AG have already done. Uh, Tim's already outlined. <coughs> Uh, the various consultations and meetings and so forth that, uh, that they've held. Um, I mentioned at the start, I'm now chairman of the Harlow uh, Area Access Group. Uh, when <coughs> the, uh, one of the team came down, uh, we made a number of recommendations that uh, you know, they need to be looking out for 
uh, in, in terms of both public and employee access. Uh, obviously, I look forward to those points uh, <coughs> being uh, being taken on board. Uh, yeah, it's the fact that they they have been listening uh, as well as doing all this work. Uh, so hopefully, this will be uh, the start of a long, beautiful relationship. I think it's a quote from the film. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to say that it's, it's really pleasant to come to a development manager <laughs> to look at an application like this rather than the norm of the meetings that we have where a, a developer wants to develop land but they're not, they're not viable so they can't afford affordable houses mm -hmm. or they can't afford social houses. So this makes a real change to a, a, a good meeting, I think. Um, looking forward, the, um, the work with universities, schools, colleges, it's really going to help the younger people of Harlow. It's going to create jobs for people in Harlow and really push the image of people uh, of Harlow, which will give us the world a good in the future. So I, I really like this application. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else wants to comment? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was a very positive debate. Thank you for that. So if we could move to the vote. All those in favour of the recommendations on pages 34 to 41 of your agendas? Finish. <laughs> uh, Thank you very much. Um, moving on to item 8, references from other committees. There are none. And item 9, matters of urgent business. There are none either. So I therefore close this meeting at... Uh, Tim Harry, uh, tonight an important day for Public Health England uh, and for Harl, isn't it? Important day. Absolutely delighted uh, with what's happened tonight. This is an uh, absolutely critical key milestone for the programme and our ability to deliver the vision of uh, a science hub campus here in Harlow. Um, long way to go, um, but it is very much a partnership, uh, I think as you've heard tonight. Lots of benefits for Harlow in terms of employment, both during the construction phase and when we become operational on site. You know, we're talking about just under 3,000 jobs, etc. Uh, and a lot of those jobs will come from Harlow. So, yeah, brilliant night. It's quite rare for, for us journalists to sit in a planning meeting and hear parties from both sides, you know, or, or with the um, unanimous feel. And that says a lot about this project. Now it's, as you said, still a long way to go. Absolutely. Um, we won't be fully up and running until about 2024-25, um, but construction will be starting in a couple of years, so I believe that Harder will start to see the economic benefits, employment benefits within the next sort of couple of years, and it will carry on. And we're here for the long term, 60 years plus. Can't get rid of us easily. <laughs> Thank you very much.